Welcome back, everyone. My name is Nina Takish. This is the Red Elevator. And today I'm going to show you my newest gut remodel. Follow me. tell you about this house I don't even know where to begin this was a house that we purchased on a whim well not necessarily a whim as you guys know we closed our first project and we were itching to do another one so the idea originally was to purchase this house do a little gut remodel nothing major and then rent it out for a couple years because the idea was that we were going to tear it down and build a giant beautiful single story mid-century home however as life is things change and we decided when it was done and ready to get rented someone fell in love with it had to purchase it even though we had done a very minimal budget reno and well here we are so the house is effectively sold we weren't planning on selling it so in fact this renovation i would say is a quick reno it is a budget reno and it's great because then you guys you know you saw the big demo that we did on our original project if you haven't seen my original flip project that we shot maybe I want to say five months ago, definitely click above so that you can watch that episode because that was a year in the making. This took us about four to five months. This was not a big deal. And I will go through exactly what we did because this is something that you can do yourselves. If you're thinking of remodeling a, an older home and you want to be on a budget. And this to me looks like a million dollars. In fact, it sold for a lot more than that and nobody wanted this house originally. When we found it, look at these videos, this is what the house looked like. We wanted to make it appealing so that it could be easily rented, not knowing it was going to be literally grabbed and purchased. It had a pagoda entrance, as you can see. It was very specific. And when you want to rent a house, you certainly want something that appeals to the masses. So we had to get rid of these references to the pagoda and make it something that was more mainstream. Once we demoed the entire fireplace, the place really opened up. It was very dark in here. And what we didn't want to do because we weren't really going to um, demo the house, we kept the shell of the house intact. We kept all the windows as is. And guess what? We kept the wood floors. They were in great shape. We sanded them, refinished them. But really, in terms of construction, construction, what we did was we renovated every space, all the bathrooms, the kitchen, all the closets were redone, but the shell of the house remained. We restuccoed the exterior of the house. We didn't have to do a new roof. It had already been changed and we did an enormous job on the backyard. This is one of the reasons the property sold so fast. There isn't a lot this large in Los Angeles. I'm telling you, if you begged, this was a really great find of a property. So the windows were in great shape for being aluminum windows from the 50s. I couldn't believe my eyes how great they were. We did put in new baseboards, but you can see in some of these rooms, these windows are perfect. We did do new screens to freshen it up, but other than that, we cleaned the windows and they were in great shape. We decided to, of course, be very cognizant of our budget because this was going to be a teardown, essentially. Someone was going to live in it, rent it, and then it was going to be torn down in approximately two years. So we didn't want to put in anything really fancy or expensive, but knowing that we are who we are and how much we love interior design, it was really hard not to find things that really appeal to us. But the items that appealed to us were very budget friendly. And we are going to link absolutely everything that was purchased in terms of furniture and whether it's raw materials, everything that we purchased for this house, I'm gonna link in the description section. It's going to be a Herculean task because there's so much stuff here, but you guys can buy the exact same thing from our Amazon drapes all the way to our towel bars. Very first thing I'm gonna talk about is this gorgeous, gorgeous formal living room. It's the only living room, so I call it the living room. And of course we did put in my Ruggable rug in here. This is a new size that was introduced by Ruggable, I wanna say as of a month ago. So for those of you who are looking for the big Ruggable, say no more. We are going to link this rug in the description section. This is a 10 by 14. This size previously did not exist. And this room is gigantic. 
So this rug really anchored the room. This is where we began the concept of the design of this room, and then everything came together after that. Because we definitely wanted to stage this property for rental, we weren't going to spend a lot of money. This was just a rental after all, but it needs to be definitely staged whether you're renting or you are selling. Why? Because you will get a return on your money. Hands down, your property is never going to be sold empty, nor is it going to be rented empty. So if you have the wherewithal to buy furniture, do it. We decided to pull things from our warehouses or from our homes, etc., in order to stage this place. We weren't going to be using a staging company. It didn't warrant it. It's not that large of a home. We're talking about a 2000 uh, square foot, 2200 square foot home. And we figured between all of the excess furniture that I own in my garage and everything else that we could certainly get this done. However, with that said, we did buy some key pieces that we needed. First and foremost, I mentioned the rug. The ruggable rug was critical in anchoring this room. This rug is definitely one of my favorites, obviously designed by moi and is probably the top seller in the line. This is a new size introduction, which was really great and came in just in time. You think they did it just for me, but they didn't. A lot of people are looking for the 10 by 14, which is its newest size, which has now been introduced, which is great because that's the size we needed for this project. The rug that is in this room is called the Seine, which is reminiscent of the Seine rug in Paris, which is what inspired me to design this rug. And the color is camel. So as I mentioned, we had these very large stones that were in encapsulating this wall that had a two-faced, two-sided fireplace. So what we decided to do was remove it, clean it out, make it smooth, and then we needed to have a surround. And in order to have a surround that I think looks good, we chose a porcelain tile that was matte. I should mention, any porcelain tile you decide to buy should always, always, and I mean always, be matte. Do not go for shiny. Do not go for anything that isn't honed. That is what makes it look better and it makes it look more expensive. The sofa we got from CB2. We love this sofa. I love the fact that it's mid-century. I love the fact that it really opens up the space and it allows for someone to envision how they could spend time in this room. The color, the texture, my hats off to CB2. They really are strong in the game. I love their product. And we paired it with the Platner coffee table. This coffee table is very famous. We will link it in the description section below, along with some other pieces in the room that we also got from CB2. Our credenza is CB2, and we've got a lot of beautiful decorative items here, such as our olive tree. And we also have the crate and barrel chair that is in this room as well and everything will be linked for your perusal. For the dining room, we decided to define the space in a way that made it feel open and airy. And the way to do that was by placing the Serge Mouille light in that area. This light fixture is a very well-known light. I am certain you have seen it before, and I love using this light. In fact, I have the original in my dining room. This is a copy, and the reason I love it, while well, the original would be tens of thousands of dollars, so it certainly wouldn't be in a project that we would be selling. However, this light is is very versatile. It can accommodate any shape table. It can be square, it can be round, it can be rectangular. And since we don't know what the homeowners or the renters were going to be bringing into the space, this is a great way to deal with it. Besides, it is absolutely gorgeous in my opinion, and it really allows for a beautiful visual impact when you walk into the home. We decided to put the most expensive marble on the planet in this kitchen because we have no sense of control but this is a gorgeous piece of marble. We knew it was going to make the kitchen. We couldn't say no. It's a Calicutta gold, which is probably the most expensive marble on the planet, but it really needed to be in this kitchen because of the fact that we were going to be more cognizant of the type of appliances we were putting in here and the type of cabinets we were putting in here. And we really wanted that wow factor. Now, this is an older home. We didn't have a lot of room. We didn't have backsplash, so we needed to be to code, of course. So we did pop-up outlets. These pop-up outlets, I will also link them in the description section, are great for those of you who don't want to put outlets all over your backsplash, and they are actually quite handy. The one thing we did do is we added this cute island and a butcher block on top of it so that you could cut your vegetables or just be able to sit and have a meal with your family. The primary bedroom, of course, was completely renovated, and we decided to do new built-ins in the closet. This refreshes the space. 
We did very similar closets to the home we did prior to this one. And these are really nice shelves. They're clean and they really allow the homeowner to be able to maximize their space. The bathrooms were completely gut renovated. We picked a porcelain tile that is beautiful and matte in color. You guys know I have difficulty using porcelain. I never use porcelain. I know I've said that over and over again, but for a home that you were planning on tearing down, you are not going to use anything other than porcelain. Although I had a bit of a uh, mind bleed and decided to put marble in the other room. However, the porcelain is not only cost effective, but it is great in a bathroom because of two things. One, it's easy to clean. Two, it doesn't stain. Three, it looks really good. Now this is Italian porcelain that we were able to source at a great price, but it is very good raw materials that we source. We didn't just go and buy random things that were on a um, deal side yard. No, we, we thought about these things carefully, chose these beautiful fixtures and elements to really make it look expensive and luxurious, but be cost effective. Our vanities were made off site. They were pre-purchased. They are vanities that you can buy from a catalog and install. If you are doing a remodel and you don't want to spend an arm and a leg, really buying these pre-made vanities that already have the countertop, the sink, everything included saves you a bundle. We were lucky enough that we found the perfect size for this bathroom. So that saved us quite a bit. We also positioned these asymmetrical mirrors. These mirrors are fun, they're interesting, they're different with a sconce in the middle. The sconce is really nothing more than an architectural detail. You, nobody really needs it for lighting, but we needed it because it had to look good. In my former life, I owned a children's boutique. I wanna say my former life, and it took every ounce of energy and wherewithal out of me and I survived retail guys, but I did lots of nurseries for celebrities from Jennifer Lopez to, I mean, you name it, every single uh, Gwen Stefani, anyone who's famous, we did their nursery. And this is now finally my second attempt at doing a nursery as an interior designer outside of my original baby boutique, which is of course now closed. So this nursery has a beautiful hand carved bed in it. This is Note Fatale. It's an Italian furniture maker that makes the most beautiful cribs in the world. I mean, literally in the world. And these cribs go for thousands of dollars. So I happen to have one from the old days. And perhaps this is an heirloom piece that will go one day to a grandchild sent one day in the very, very distant future. I am very, very far from that. But one day this can be one of those cribs. We added some fun elements in the room to really bring the joy of having a baby. Perhaps the person that would potentially buy this house could think about having a baby or maybe has a baby. So we thought it would be a fun idea to incorporate this nursery and bring in small whimsical touches, such as this adorable little horse that you can ride on or the oversized bear or the fun ABC blocks. The rug in the primary bedroom is also a ruggable, shockingly. I don't know who thought of that, but that rug is a nine by 12 and it's also the Sen, but it is in the opposite color. So it is in the black and cream color. The guest room, nothing special here. We, of course, we did the closets, repainted, sanded the floors, and the furniture we chose was different pieces we got from Amazon, etc. Everything will be linked that is available below. And of course, shockingly, the Loire rug has found its way over here. This is one of my favorites. It's also in my primary bedroom, and this rug has been positioned under this bed that we actually got from Amazon. The Loire is a very versatile rug. It really matches all kinds of different furnishings and furniture so this is a great transitional rug if you are so inclined we did a cute office we know everyone is working from home this was uh, very simple we got a desk from i believe wayfair we got the desk chair we brought in the cb2 gwyneth chair is in this room this is cb2's top selling chair by the way is the gwyneth and we of course had one we placed it in there and lastly, I want to talk about the best part of the house. Well, there's two best parts of the house. We've got the powder room and we've got the outside. If you leave this video, you will miss the grandeur of the landscaping and the amount of money we had to put in the landscaping was mind boggling. But look, it sold the house in two seconds, even though we weren't trying to sell it. So something 
good came of it. The entrance into the house, there was blue flagstone on the floors, great in the 50s, not so great in today's world. So we actually placed, and I will link it below, this adorable checkered pattern porcelain, very easy to install tile, and you can certainly use this in any of your projects. And we bled it into the powder room. So I like to keep things simple. So if you've got a flooring that is in the main part of the house and it bleeds into certain areas such as powder rooms and closets, I would definitely do that. So we bled it into the powder room and the powder room is something that we did not spare any expense on. I don't know why. It's just because in wholeheartedly, it is very difficult for me to design spaces that don't look over the top, gorgeous and beautiful. So putting in a cheap sink was just not an option. So we custom designed this gorgeous sink, literally designed it out of nothing, thin air, had it made, custom made. This is the piece that took the absolute longest, which we thought we couldn't even go to market until this piece arrived. And it came in at the very last second. So the marble is viola. It's a gorgeous calicutta as well. And we figured, you know what? We will take the sink with us wherever we go next after we demo the house. That was the reasoning that we decided to put in this gorgeous sink. And we wanted whoever was going to rent the house to really have this moment of love for the house. And apparently they loved it so much, they had to have it. So now we have to part with it. We have to say goodbye. The wall has a Slim Aaron piece, which is a very fun um, photography of the Hotel du Cap in the south of France. I love this piece. It goes wherever I go. This is actually from my home, brought it, hung it, and uh, this will be going back to its original owner. The secondary bathroom, we did exactly what we did in the primary bathroom. We gutted the entire bathroom and we brought in these beautiful hexagon shaped tiles. We paired them with large porcelain tiles. These large porcelain tiles, as you can see, are on the shower walls and in front of the tub shower. So this is a very inexpensive way of making something look very expensive. The larger your tile on the wall, in my opinion, when you've got a small tile on the floor, this is a great combination. So we did the same thing in the master. We found these oversized tiles. I believe they were 50 by um, 38, something in that of that nature. And we just placed them vertically, one on top of the other, and then we followed it in front of the tub and in the a primary we went with it onto the floor, which I think is great. You don't want to over design when you're doing your primary bathrooms or your, any of your bathrooms. You don't want to have a different tile in every corner. You, want, you don't want to have too many materials. That to me always looks busy and it always looks inexpensively and poorly done. The less materials you have, the smoother and the better it looks. Now, none of the windows were changed in this house. None of the doors were changed in this house, except the only thing we did change was the sliding glass door that leads to the outside. We wanted something a little bit bigger. We wanted it to be easy and functional and the sliding glass door that was here before just wasn't working well. So we put in a generic one, which is perfectly nice. And when you open the sliding glass door, which you see in this patio, in this oasis of a garden of a, what I call the Amazon of Los Angeles is breathtaking. We have a very old, probably a 60, 70 year old, beautiful olive tree that is in the center of this garden. And if you look at the old footage, you will note that this tree didn't get the attention it deserved. We decided to really put an emphasis on the tree, make it the center of the yard by outlining a circle around it. And of course, we have gorgeous lights that are pointing. We have up lights on this tree at night. It is glistening and, and beautiful. It is just stunning to have a beautiful ode to the former owners of this home. And of course, to the grandchildren of the homeowners who of course, always check in with us. If you happen to have a giant backyard, this is a great way to sort of create segmented areas. One, we did a pergola. This pergola was purchased and placed here so that people could sit under the shade where they can get away from the sun. Los Angeles is a very warm city. You need to have shade in order to be able to resist the outdoor elements. So we definitely brought the pergola in and then we used 
what I always like to talk about is gravel. Gravel is your best friend when you are doing backyard and landscaping. It is an inexpensive material that looks very expensive. It's always gravel for the win. The backyard was so large that we decided to divide it into two. Water is a commodity here. We can't be watering lawn and not being cautious to our mother earth. So we wanted to be drought resistant and we wanted to be smart. So we added a smaller patch of grass, but then the rest of it is an oasis where you can discover different plants. There is a pathway, of course, which we use with gravel. We used boarding on the side so that it can create this sort of yellow brick path without yellow bricks. And we planted a lot of indigenous plants to California. They're very water resistant. Why? We want to be cognizant of how much water we are using in California. And this yard is so large. We also added path lights so that at night, it looks like you could take a walk in your own backyard up and down this gorgeous pathway. So this is a great way to segment your landscaping, your outdoor, so that you can have a place that looks very cohesive and it looks like it comes together and almost looks like a resort. This is resort living. As you know, we have purchased yet another property because our fingers get sticky when we don't have lots to do. So this is a very enjoyable process for me. I hope you guys love these flip projects and I want to know which part of this house you guys love the most. Which was your aha moment? What did you love? And again, thank you for joining me on this episode of The Red Elevator and I can't wait to see all of you again next week on this channel.